Clinical Chemistry, Pancreatic Function The gastrointestinal system comprises the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines, and then there are accessory organs that exist outside of the GI tract that contribute to the processes of digestion, such as the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Digestion is the process by which starches, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids are degraded to molecules for absorption and use in the body. The pancreas is a large gland involved in the digestive process but lies outside of the GI system. It's located behind the peritoneal cavity across the upper abdominal at the left of the first and second lumbar vertebrae one to two inches above the umbilicus. It's composed of both endocrine and exocrine tissue. So the endocrine component we've talked about um, several times throughout the course already produces hormones that are involved in regulating blood glucose levels and um, digestive processes. They're produced by the islets of Langerhans, and the hormones include insulin, glucagon, gastrin, and somatostatin. The exocrine component is the digestive function of the pancreas. It produces the digestive fluids that are rich with enzymes in pancreatic acinar cells, like grape-like clusters, which line the pancreas and are connected by small ducts. It secretes about 1.5 to 2 liters per day of fluid into the ducts that empty into the duodenum. Hormones are released as inactive, um, or, sorry, enzymes, the digestive enzymes are released as inactive zymogens, and they get activated once they get into their location of um, use. So um, they are released as precursors. Once they get to where they're actually going to be functional, then they get activated. Pancreatic disorders are summarized below. There are endocrine disorders such as diabetes mellitus or hormone producing tu tumors, exocrine insufficiency, so pancreatic insufficiency leading to maldigestion and malabsorption, inflammatory or necrotic injury, acute and chronic pancreatitis, and neoplastic disorders such as um, different types of cancers, adenocarcinomas, islet cell tumors, and may lead to bile duct obstruction. Cystic fibrosis is another um, generalized disorder. We typically think of this as a respiratory disorder, but it does have some implications in digestive function. So with cystic fibrosis, um, it's an exocrine pancreatic malfunction. Pancreatic and other secretions are viscous and of low volume. It leads to greatly reduced pancreatic flow, pancreatic duct obstruction, and atrophy, which leads to malnutrition and malabsorption. Um, so we have a defect in a chloride uh, uptake uh, pump, and because that chloride is left um, there, we typically um, have a decrease in uh, osmolarity of the solution. So we start to get a thick and viscous solution that lines the lungs, the GI tract, which impacts um, the ability to breathe and it impacts the ability to absorb um, nutrients from the diet. It also lines the pancreas, and this is why uh, we're discussing cystic fibrosis when we're talking about the pancreas here. Pancreatic insufficiency is a reduction or loss of pancreatic exocrine digestive function. Decreased immunoreactive trypsin leads to se severe GI disturbances, diarrhea, constipation, malabsorption, weight loss, um, kachikia up here, up here. Causes in children, it's almost always due to cystic fibrosis. In adults, it's usually due to chronic pancreatitis, particularly associated with alcoholism. Also, atherosclerosis with subsequent pancreatic atrophy. Bile duct obstruction um, can also cause pancreatic insufficiency. Inflammatory or necrotic pancreatic injury. Acute and chronic pancreatitis. So itis is inflammation of, pancreas is referring to the pancreas. So uh, acute pancreatitis is a discrete and sudden episode of diffuse enzymatic destruction of the pancreas. Release of active pancreatic enzymes into the glandular parenchyma. So previously I mentioned that enzymes from the pancreas that are designed for digestive functions are released as inactive, and then they get activated once they get into um, their location where they're going to be functional, so typically in the duodenum. In the case of acute pancreatitis, these enzymes are activated inside of the pancreas, and they start to digest away the pancreatic tissue. 
presents with severe knife-like pain associated with nausea and vomiting, varies from mild self-limiting disease to necrotizing hemorrhagic pancreatitis. It's often associated with alcoholism, biliary tract disease, cholelithiasis, or gallstones. Um, so alcoholism, that's typically more associated with uh, chronic pancreatitis. Biliary tract disease, like an obstruction due to a stone suddenly blocking the um, pancreatic duct, is more commonly associated with acute pancreatitis. Other causes of pancreatitis are listed here below. So there's certain drugs, abdominal operations, um, coronary artery bypass, injection of radiological dye into the pancreatic duct for dis, uh, diagnostic visualization, uh, physical trauma, um, hypercalcemia, obstruction of outflow of pancreatic duct, inflammation or spasm caused by anatomical defect or other diseases, renal transplantation, the presence of hyperlipidemia, um, which triglycerides would be over 1,000 mg per liter or 100 mg per deciliter. 25% of cases are idiopathic, so 25% of the time we don't know what causes the pancreatitis. The pathogenesis of pancreatitis is outlined below. So protrypsin is converted to trypsin and released into the gland, and it's self-digestive attack on the gland structure. So um, trypsin then starts to digest away the pancreatic tissue. Lysosomal enzymes cause coalescence of zymogen granules, and that causes the premature activation of enzymes. Activation of clotting complement systems leads to inflammation, thrombosis, tissue damage, and bleeding. Lecithin, or bile, and lysolecithin is um, toxic. It promotes the destruction of ass in our cell membranes. And then we have activation and release of vasoactive substances, which causes shock, circulatory collapse, and death. Complications, adult respiratory distress syndrome is caused by auto-digestion of pulmonary capillaries by circulating activated pancreatic en enzymes. Pseudocyst formation, half of all severe cases develop a pseudocyst. Ascites is the persistent leak of fluid from a pseudocyst or disrupted pancreatic duct. Pleural effusion is the spread of inflammatory exudate into the pleural space. Pancreatic and peripancreatic abscess formation is rare but serious. It's necrotic pancreatic tissue that becomes infected with coliform bacteria. Chronic pancreatitis is the presence of chronic inflama inflammatory lesions that are characterized by the destruction of exocrine, parenchyma, fibrosis, and later endocrine functions. It may present as a sudden onset diabetes mellitus, malabsorption, jaundice, or GI bleeding. Symptoms include dull or sharp and steady epigastric or lower abdominal pain radiating to the back. Onset of gradual, uh, the onset is gradual, but it lasts days to weeks. Etiology is unknown. Potential causes include alcohol abuse, which is the most common cause of chronic pancreatitis, hyperparathyroidism, hypercalcemia, hyperlipidemia. Diagnosis can be difficult. Enzymes may not be elevated due to tissue destruction. So how do we diagnose acute pancreatitis? We measure serum urine or urine amylase. Levels would be higher in cases of acute pancreatitis. Serum lipase, again, levels would be higher. Other tests include serum creatinine, calcium glucose, and serum immunoreactive trypsin or chymotrypsin. Amylase digests carbohydrates. It's a small protein and it requires calcium for its activity. It's present in a wide variety of tissues and organs. There's a salivary amylase and a pancreatic amylase. Pancreatic amylase is inactivated by trypsin activity in the intestine and it's active in the alkaline pH of the intestine. Its clinical significance is the diagnosis of pancreatitis. It has a transient rise in serum amylase within five to eight hours of pan uh, pancreatitis onset. Four to six times the elevation is common and it peaks at 12 hours. The greater the elevation, the more likely acute pancreatitis is. It may be normal in cases associated with hyperlipidemia. It's corrected by dilution or ultracentrifugation. 
and magnitude of elevation does not correlate with the severity. Returns to normal by three or four days, and it's useful in monitoring for complications. So higher levels more likely guarantees that it's pancreatitis, but it does not mean that it's more severe pancreatitis. There are other causes of increased amylase, so renal insufficiency, neoplastic diseases, infection surgery, biliary tract diseases, cerebral trauma, intra-abdominal disease, alcoholism, ectopic pregnancy, and macroamylacemia. Um, typically levels are going to be monitored and uh, correlated with symptoms of the patient. The amylase to creatinine clearance ratio is the reference range is an assay dependent. It's calculated from the terminations of amylase, creatinine on the same urine sample and serum collected at the same time. And it's in the range of two to 5%. It is increased in acute pancreatitis. <clears throat> Lipase is a glycoprotein. It hydrolyzes the glycerol esters of long-chain fatty acids, so it breaks apart um, triglycerides and fatty acids into glycerol and fatty acids. Um, concentration in pancreatitis is 100 times greater than in other tissues. It's 20,000 times greater in the pancreas uh, than in serum. Full activity requires bile salts and colipase, or cofactor. The substrate must be emulsified. We emulsify fats in the digestive tract using bile salts that we get from the gallbladder. Colipase binds with the bile salts of the micelle, and the lipase binds the complex, allowing the reaction to proceed. Some is secreted by gastric and intestinal mu mucosa. It's also found in white blood cells, adipose tissue, and in milk. Filter and reabsorbed um, in the kidney, not normally present in urine. The clinical significance of lipase, it's measured in serum plasma and acidic fluid for the diagnosis of pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis activity increases within four to eight hours and peaks at 24 hours. Elevations of two to 50 times is normal. Um, elevations generally parallel amylase. It decreases within seven to 14 days. Elevations, again, do not correlate with severity. So um, when I say elevations of two to 50 times um, normal, that means that uh, lipase levels would be 2 to 50 times what the normal reference range would be in order to diagnose acute pancreatitis. We measure it in parallel with amylase to monitor the complications, and it's useful in ruling out other disorders. Trypsin and chymotrypsin. So trypsin, um, trypsin 1 is the major form in serum in healthy individuals. Rises are parallel with amylase. It peaks two to 400 times the normal reference range. Distribution of different forms of trypsin relate to the type and severity of pancreatitis. So the mildest um, is 80 to 90% trypsinogen 1. More severe would be lower trypsinogen 1. And it exists as a complex with alpha-1 antitrypsin and alpha-2 macroglobulin. Besides the diagnosis of pancreatitis, there are several tests of pancreatic function. The secretin CCK test is a de direct determination of the exocrine secretory capacity of the pancreas. The test involves intubation of the duodenum without contamination by gastric fluid, which would neutralize any bicarbonate. The test is performed after six hours or overnight fast. Decreased pan pancreatic flow is associated with pancreatic obstruction and increase in enzyme concentrations. Low concentrations of bicarbonate and enzymes are associated with cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, pancreatic cysts, calcification, and edema of the pancreas. Another test would be a fecal fat analysis. So fecal lipids are derived from four sources, unabsorbed ingested lipids, lipids excreted into the intestine, cells shed into the intestine, and metabolism of intestinal bacteria. Qualitative screening is done with Sedan-3, Sedan-4, Oil Red O, or Nile Blue Sulfate. Neutral fats and other lipids sustain the yellow to orange, um, yellow orange to red with Sedan-3 because the dye is more soluble in the lipid. Increases in fats and undigested meat fibers uh, indicate steatorrhea of pancreatic origin. 
Quantitative fecal fat determination is usually on a 72-hour stool collection. Sweat tests, so we measure the sodium and chloride content of sweat, and it's most useful in the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis. It's significantly elevated um, concentrations of both ions occur in more than 99% of affected patients. Serum enzymes, amylase is the serum enzyme most commonly relied on for detecting pancreatic disease. It is not, however, a function test, so amylase is particularly useful in the diagnosis of acute pancreatitis in which a significant increase in serum concentrations occur about 75% uh, of patients.